Things change, but Deer Park Natural Spring Water is a constant you can count on, bringing you the essence of home for 150 years and counting. Sourced from carefully selected springs, Deer Park Natural Spring Water has naturally occurring electrolytes for a crisp, refreshing taste. Find Deer Park Natural Spring Water at your favorite local retailer today. After 150 years, there's only one thing left to say. Deer Park, that's still good water. Well, seeing as just about everyone is casting a vote this year, I thought I'd ask for one as well. To vote? Not yet. It's not political. Thank f- uh, <clears throat> thank goodness. It's actually for this show. To vote for... Just... The British Podcast Awards Listener's Choice category is open for voting, and we need you. Now, mate, now. To vote for Sherlock and Co., go to www.britishpodcastawards.com forward slash voting. That's britishpodcastawards.com forward slash voting. We won't let you down. That's my campaign pledge to you. This has been a party political broadcast by the John... Stop it. Yeah, yep. Vote for us, britishpodcastawards.com forward slash voting. Bye now. For just £6 a month, binge ad-free adventures in full and have access to so much more over at patreon.com forward slash Sherlock and Co. Warning, this adventure contains no Mariana. That's right, nothing, not a trace of Mariana at all. So if that's offensive to you, then you better switch off. Sorry, nothing I can do about it. Uh, You'll see why. Also, this episode is, um, well, this adventure is three parts. Again, if that offends you, nothing I can do about that. But I will remind you that this is independent, free media. So stop your whinging about multiple parts. Otherwise, in 10 years' time, you'll be paying 20 quid a month to some tech bro who solved all your problems. Sorry, this is just a rant. Uh, Not an intro at all. Um, Right, there's a bit of swearing in this episode. A bit of fruity slash saucy language at times, too. Nothing too bad. All right, then. Bye. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> get a load of that, Archie boy. That is... Oh, what is that again? Uh, that is an organic liver sausage. Thoughts? Oh, that's very flattering, but I didn't make it. You know, it came like that in the shop. Yeah, that's it. Lick your drool off the floor. Lovely stuff. <sighs> Good thing about you, Archie, mate, is that you're basically a portable bin. You're like one of those vacuum cleaners, you know, little robot vacuums. Speaking of, I need to clean before we go, don't I, matey, mate? <laughs> Will this conversation be going on any longer? Sorry? The dialogue between you and Archie. Will it be continuing for much longer, or is the conversation coming to an end? What's the problem? I'm trying to focus. On what? Your drug-induced coma? Well, no, actually. I'm amusing myself with this newspaper column, The Agony Aunt. People write in with their woes and failings in life, the demise of their circumstances, the struggles of their relationships, the collapse of their livelihoods. Sounds very similar to our show, to be honest, mate. It's rather very good. Do you want to give it a read? Uh, Sounds lovely, but no, I'm all right, thanks. Why not? This is what people amuse themselves with. There's a woman here who found her husband interfering with a man named Henry Hoover. Rather scandalous to give the gentleman's name away, I thought, but... Uh, no, sorry. I, no, I, I think... I think she means he was interfering with a Henry Hoover. A what? It's a brand of vacuum cleaner. Mmm, good God. Yep, and you've showed your hand there too. My hand? You've never vacuumed the flat, because we have a Henry Hoover, and on that note, I'm going to do a proper clean. Then, are we good to go? I haven't packed. Oh, for God's sake. Well, can you pack, please? I will clean. Certainly, Watson. Apologies. Right, Dettol. Cloths, 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 cloths. And Hoover. Oh, Henry. Oh, I just can't look at you the same now, mate. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're going on eBay. My name is Dr John Watson, once of the British Army Northumberland Fusilier Regiment, now a true crime podcaster based in central London. I don't have much experience in criminology, so this is mostly a record of how I met possibly the most brilliant and 
bizarre person I have ever and will ever know. Join me as I document the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Hello everybody, uh, forgive me for this one, oh, I mean to be fair you've had an episode every week since I started this thing, but it's holiday time, Mariana is off to sunny Spain for some Father's Day, well belated Father's Day time with her dad, and so Sherlock and I were trying to think how we could have a little glamorous holiday, holly bobs, as people that drive Fiat 500s and drink rosé say. You say holly bobs? Yeah, but only ironically. Mm-hmm, how convenient for you. What are you doing? Using a microscope. On a bus? Mm Mm-hmm. It's attached to your phone? It's digital. Oh. Oh, that's impressive. (laughs) What uh, what are you looking at? Blue. Okay, why? For a friend. Are we going to elaborate any further than that? A friend at the Met. They found a knife in the St Pancras case. Well, fragments of what they thought could be a knife. See in there, look. I've only given you that tiny piece? Not many pieces to go round. It's burned and charred. Look. Quite bobbly. Yes. Remnants of a grip. Where's the glue? Everything to do with the crime was incinerated, including the knife. But you can see how these small blotches on the grip burned first and fiercest. Yeah. That's because it's more flammable and more toxic than the rest of it. So it was imprinted on the handle. What is toxic? and flammable when burnt. Glue? Exactly. Epoxy, if we're being as exact as possible. There are glycidal residues, one of a number of things produced by the reaction of a cyclic alkene with a parasite. Cycloaliphatic expozides. Goodness, I feel sick. Yeah, yeah, maybe don't peer into a digital microscope while on a long coach journey. Mm, Good idea. So why does the glue matter? Because the key suspect is a repair technician. He works mostly with metals and plastic. Epoxy resins are the ideal glue for working with both. Fascinating. Do you wish to continue with your apology to the listeners? Yes, yeah, yeah. Where where was I? Uh... Holly Bobs. Yes, thanks. Uh, So, Sherlock and I, um, and this guy, uh, that's Archie, in case you didn't hear that, are having a little break ourselves. I would have wanted somewhere abroad, to be honest, but we can't leave Mr. Dog, so we're off to Swindon. Uh, yeah. Woo! (laughs) Now, just to clarify, it's actually just outside Swindon, near Wooden Bassett. uh, Royal Wooden Bassett, excuse me. Uh, Carol Watson is away on an actual holiday, and she's kindly handed over Casa de Watson for me and Sherlock and Archie to kick back, chill out, become irritated in one another's presence, miss the amenities we used to, get bored and come home. Uh, You never know, we might enjoy it as well. We're currently on a rail replacement bus, for those of you uninitiated in British rail travel. It's quite crap every now and then. Uh, We've been here, there and everywhere, haven't we, eh, this morning? (laughs) No. That's just an expression. We've had a bit of a convoluted route, is all I'm... Yeah, so... Yeah, rail replacement situation. So this bus is doing its best impression of a train right now and driving us down the M4 to Swindon bus station. And Swindon is a pleasant town, is it? You seem rather fond of it. Yeah, it is. It's it's pleasant, yeah. A bit run down in places, but otherwise it's very nice. I just wasn't expecting the man at the bus shelter to urinate on people's luggage. Yeah, no, he, um, that was a bit unexpected. But uh, hey, he ran out of steam before he got two hours, didn't he? So here we are, mate. What do you think? This is where John Watsons are born and made. Well, born in Tottenham, made in the army. Well, made and then broken in the army, then subsequently fixed at 221B Baker Street. You were born in this village? Yep, in that very house there. Who delivered the baby? Mum's a midwife, mate. She's got connections. Uh, but more importantly, this spot right here is where I snogged Stacey Marsh and she let me, you know. I don't know. You know. Why are you raising your eyebrows like that? Come on. Uh, stop nudging me with your elbow. What are you talking about? Right, well, let's just say she didn't just get a double D in maths and French. You really are awful. She taught me a bit of French as well. 
you can't wink, so stop trying. And how would she teach you French if she got a D? <laughs> and you don't need to record these vulgarities. There's no episode. Hey, you see that bus shelter down there, by the way? Mm-hmm. That is where Lee Pierce ate a backpack. What do you mean, he ate a backpack? In tiny chunks. Took him seven hours. He's regional manager at Tesco now. In charge of seven stores. You are an idiot. That's what happened, mate. Uh, kitchen slash lounge. Then there's two bedrooms upstairs, but she's also turned that room there, which uh, was a dining room, the most obviously useless room in the world. She's turned that into a little bedroom. Um, I'll be in my old room, so you can either sleep in my mum's room, yuck, or you can sleep in the little room. Her room is nice and everything, but the door bangs in the breeze at night and she has a clock in there. Little downstairs room it is. Lovely. Uh, right, so I was thinking we unpack, have a cup of tea on this nice sunny day out in the garden and head down to the Mallard. What's the Mallard? Pub. Understood. Oh, and Mum left me a voice note the other day that said something about what she wanted doing with the bins. Uh, here. 18 minutes? Hmm? The voice note she left. 18 minutes. Yeah, I know. She waffles incessantly. She just goes on and on and on. And I, and I say it to her all the time. I'm like, Mum, you just keep talking. But she doesn't listen, does she? Because she just talks in circles. Never gets around to making any concise point, you know? You're bouncing around from point to point to point. And then before you know it, she's gone from that bloke down the road to this place that didn't get planning permission, that thing she saw on the TV. Why are you looking at me like that? No reason. Right. Hey, anyway, let's try and find the bit where she mentioned bins. She locks them sometimes. I can pick locks, Watson. I'd much rather that than 18 minutes of a voice note. Hello, lovely. Scorcher today. Isn't it a scorcher? Don't you hate that when you've got a holiday planned and the weather turns just before you go? Uh, let me skip forward 15 seconds. Sunglasses that don't have UV protection. So I said, Charlie, I can't... Nope. But it used to be the old schoolhouse, you know, the one... Nope. They've had her done, but she's had 14 puppies, John. Can you... Um, he said he was after my vote, and I said... Fine, here we go. The pretty lesbian girl with the... Sake mother. He's from Somalia. Like the fella that runs, what's his name? Mo Salah. Farrow, Mo, Mo Farrow. Thank God I'm not putting any of this in. Small boat. Uh, Pension tax. Um, Aryan Meg. Sake. Oh, it's gone quiet it's on the... communism. Bollocks. £180 for a big shop. Uh, nearly there. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Charlie whipped out his... Uh, Pino. The size of it, John. I was sloshed before you know it. OK, no, now we're definitely nearly there. <clears throat> he thinks she's gone missing. Such a scandal. Honestly, he's broke. Wait, stop. What? What's this? And Joe Mason was the one that told me all about it. Because old lardy da Robert, my farts don't stink, old Bobby Knobhead. Right, can I, can I skip ahead? Who's Bobby Knobhead? <laughs> no, it's, um... <laughs> I'll explain it in a minute. Anyway, no one has seen Beatrice in, we're talking months, John. Months and months. And he keeps saying she's off in Saint-Tropez. Joe made a good point. He said, when has Beatrice ever missed the Shoscom Festival at Shoscom Old Place? She runs the bloody thing. Very mysterious. One for lovely Sherlock, maybe. Who knows? Anyway, what was I saying? Bins, woman, bins. Ah, oh, that's it. Joe. Joe's going to sort the bins. You don't need to worry. For fuck. Oh, great. Sat through that for nothing. Who is this Beatrice? It, really, it's just local nonsense, mate, honestly. Why is she missing? No, so, Bobby Nob... Uh, I mean, Robert Norbertson, um, lives in Shoscombe Old Place with his sister Beatrice. He, he thinks he's some fancy bloke now because his sister married Rich. And yeah, that's Beatrice. She's very old. She was married to... Uh, what's his face? What's his face? Sir James Falder. And he's... Gentry. Is he? Oh, yeah, Gentry, but big, big, well-known uh, racing driver, you know, in the 30s, or maybe the 50s, I don't know. Anyway, he died uh, a while ago, I was still living here when he did, but um, anyway, the Falders own Shoscom Motors. The cars? The cars, yeah. Well, you were wrong on both your guesses. Yeah, all right, 1948, but he raced throughout the 50s. This is, uh, what's this one? Uh, Swedish Grand Prix. And there he is there, look. A Shoscombe Spaniel. Shoscombe Spaniel. That's why the green in Shoscombe is called Spaniel Green. Well, a lot of people think that the Prince pub over in New Shoscombe is named after the Prince of Wales, but it's actually named after the Shoscombe Prince, which is a car that, um... Look at this. Find it on the tube. Uh, yeah, here. Who's this fellow? That's James Bond. Right. And who's that woman in the bikini? 
It, uh, I daren't say her name, because this is a family show. Mm, I thought we weren't releasing any episodes. But look, look what car he gets into. Well, it has a throbbing engine and goes like thunder. So does the car. Oh, Jay. A Shoskum. That is a Shoskum Prince. Look at it, mate. Beautiful. Stunning. I mean, it's like some... It, lo- it looks like it's almost been pulled out of the earth, like it's been formed into that shape over thousands of years or something. Just... They, they don't make cars like that anymore. I mean, literally, they don't make that car anymore. So what became of the Falders? Well, Sir James married Beatrice. I don't know where... I've. She's always been around in the area. And her brother, Bobby Knobhair, uh, Robert Norbertson, he's car mad. So when James died, he moved himself in. To Shoskum Old Place. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like I say, he's not a big posho or anything. He's just a local guy who now prances around in red trousers. But he went to my crappy school, yeah, years before me, obviously. He looks after Beatrice, I think Mum says, but everyone knows he's just in it for the cars and the festival, which we can go to if you want to go. To Shoskum Festival? Yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff, you know. It's a big man of grounds, camping, fishing, uh, like food trucks, live bands, beer tent, loads of games. I won a penalty shootout competition there when I was 10. Got a football sign by nearly the whole Swindon squad. <laughs> and that was a prize, was it? <laughs> Shut up. So, thoughts? So she's missing? Yeah. I mean, this is Carol Watson we're talking about. Take all that with a pinch of salt and half a bottle of Chardonnay. Who alerted her to the disappearance of Beatrice? She mentioned the news coming from Joe. Yeah, Joe. Joe Mason. He's a neighbour. How'd you know that? He's tending to Carol's bins. Right, yeah. Yeah. Fancy's mum. Always has. I think we may need to speak to him. Why's that? Because, Watson, I believe the game may very well be afoot. Things change, but Deer Park Natural Spring Water is a constant you can count on. Bringing you the essence of home for 150 years and counting. Sourced from carefully selected springs, Deer Park Natural Spring Water has naturally occurring electrolytes for a crisp, refreshing taste. Find Deer Park Natural Spring Water at your favorite local retailer today. After 150 years, there's only one thing left to say. Deer Park, that's still good water. Right, so Joe's a bit weird. He's obsessed with the Beatles. The entire species, or particular suborders. The Beatles, the band. Just try not to get him on the subject, otherwise he'll never shut up. Why does he have porcelain octopuses in his garden? Because he's weird, just not remotely their habitat. Octopuses garden... A lot of people think that just Ringo wrote Octopus's Garden, but George Harrison worked on it with him. It's probably because John and Paul dismissed not only Ringo's tracks, but George's and all. Sorry, what? Hey, Joe. John bloody hell. Oh, hello. Oh, oh. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, your mum says you got beat up in Ukraine. Blown up. I got blown up in Ukraine. No. Yeah. Same thing happened to Pete West. You're kidding me. Nope. You know everyone's those bouncy castle hires up in Ufcott? Yeah. Well, Charlie Martin's lad, big fat kid he is, he jumped on his Godzilla one, the big inflatable, uh, well, Godzilla, with the tail and all that. Yeah, it caused a rupture in the fabric, right? Bang! Blew up in his face. Went to Great Western Hospital with a broke nose. All blood on his face and that. I mean, you know what it's like. Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Joe. Yeah, sorry, God, sorry, Joe. This is Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, this is Joe Mason. Good to meet you, Joe. Where's Gary Lineker then, eh? Who? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, no, goal hanger. Yeah, he's not with us today. Just work for him. This one dragged you down to Wiltshire then, has he? Indeed. A few issues with the trains, so we've been... mm, here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> Here, there, and everywhere. Revolver album, 1966. Yep. Mind if we come in? Joe? Mind it? I'd love it. Of course, yeah. Come on in. When did your mum head off on her holidays? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Uh. Oh, my troubles seem so far away. Who are these gentlemen? Just stop touching stuff. It's like... Some sort of shrine. Stop. We need to make this brief. Look at the details. Get out. Hello. Goodbye. 
say goodbye and I'll say hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, listen, Joe. Magical Mystery Tour, 1967. John didn't actually like that song. He preferred I Am The Walrus. Wanted that to be the A-side. You did what, John? It's a different, John. Um, hey, Joe, we wanted to ask you, actually, a few questions about Shoscombe Old Place. Oh, yeah. You still work there, don't you? Yes, mate. Only had today off in past three weeks. Can you believe that? Festival kicks off tomorrow, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. Of course. We're um, we're actually thinking of going along. You got her? Yeah, I'll get you free tickets. Oh, lovely. Just ask as you come in, I'll put your name on a thing. Oh, great. And they'll, they'll just let us in? Of course, mate. If they don't, you'll have to pay the old 50 quid on entry. Rip off that, innit? Blimey. Well, don't let me down. Don't let me down. b site Get back. Recorded same day, in fact. 20th of January 1969. Yeah, Joe, Mum was saying that Beatrice Folder hasn't been seen in some time. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, and all we hear it from her comes through Bobby Knobhead. Sorry, just, we might be, um, we, you know, we're in the true crime documentary game, <laughs> and we might be recording this particular case, so if we could just call him by his actual... Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. Just no young people listening to the show and everything. And, you know, Robert himself might eventually hear it. So. No, no, of course, of course, of course. No, 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 I get it. Robert Norbertson, I should be saying, not Bobby Norbert. Uh, Beatrice's brother, that is, obviously. I mean, you know that, don't you? Yeah, he tells us, doesn't he, that she's gone off to Saint Tropez. And I thought, yeah, I don't blame you, love, really. Miserable weather, wasn't it? The rain and all that. Awful, yeah. Very rainy. Yes. So she swans off, doesn't she? She's got the money, obviously, why not? But then May comes around and we're still asking about her, right? Because she ain't, she ain't well, John, is she? She ain't been well for... She wasn't well even when I was still here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, bloody ages ago. Anyway, Bobby Nobbit, excuse me, Robert Norbertson, uh, he says, oh, no, she's staying out there a bit longer now, right? So I spoke to Jill Pring, who works with Kev Dunn at the Green Dragon. And you know BFG who runs it? Yeah. Who's BFG? Uh, Big Fat George runs the Green Dragon. That's not very kind. Oh, he's ever so thin now, John. You want to see him? He got a tapeworm back in 2019. Looks incredible. Anyway, he's got Beatrice's dog now. Why? He told Jill, who told Kev, who told me, that Robert Norbertson gave it away. He gave Beatrice's dog away to this man? (laughs) Yeah, correct. Did she have any animosity towards the creature? They were inseparable. She loved that dog. Loved it. I hated it, personally. Whiny little twat was Jasper. But she fought the world. Whiny, you say? Interesting. Uh, Continue with Beatrice Falder's Saint-Tropez excursion. Of course, yes. She's off sunning herself. And she don't come back. And we're proper close to Shoscombe Festival now, aren't we? All on her manor grounds. And she loves it as well, don't she, Yeah, she was always around. Always around in what sense? Well, when we go as kids and teenagers, she was... She kind of ran the thing, didn't she? <laughs> just a bloody bitch, John. They'd all the cars and that, wouldn't they? You'd have all these people coming just for the cars alone. From all over as well. Yeah, all over Wiltshire and some of Berkshire. Yeah, but all over the world. Oh, loads of foreigners, loads of them. American, Saudi. What's the other loaded ones? Uh, Dubai? No, other one. Uh, World Cup. Qatar. Qataris, they love have it. Have the Folder family considered selling the cars? Ooh. Them cars. Oof. Big decision. Why? Them cars, mate. Right. You've got 12 Shoscombe Spaniels left in the world. Picture that, right? 12 of them. Guess how many we've got? Eight. We've got eight of them. The Shoscombe Prince of Bond car, right? There's two of them in the world. One of them in California, one here. People go mad for those things, mate. They go absolutely potty. They must be worth millions. Millions and millions, mate. But Beatrice loves them as well as James did. And bloody Robert, he's been a petrol head since he were little. And his dad used to work on the trains. He loved all that. Amazing cars. Amazing history. Oh, amazing. Obviously, mate. But your mate here's right. They love them, but apparently now they're flogging them. What? Auction on the final day of the festival. Going to be on ITV. They've got a big gold London fellow with the, with the, the hammer. What's it? The auctioneer, that's it. It's a whole thing, John. She's selling the cars? Well, you say she. Where the heck is she, John? You know, it don't add up. she joy for a Shoscombe Spaniel every day, wouldn't she? Across Buckton Lane. Buckton Lane. Buckton Lane. What one's that? The one that goes through her grounds. Oh, the long and winding road. Long and winding road. Beatles last number one hit in the US. That Joe. One. But you know, it's a funny thing, right? Because before she left, she dried the spaniel. But it's like, I don't know. It's it's like she'd never done it before, John. Right? She's cranking through the gears and spluttering along like no one's business. Weird. Did did anyone manage to speak to her at no. that time? She, she wouldn't stop for anybody. This was a thing. If anyone got close, she'd speed away in the car, especially bloody could. Do you know of any way we could contact Beatrice? 
She's an 86-year-old woman in San Tropez, John. I ain't got a Scooby, mate. And she doesn't have a phone? She might, but who's got her number, you know? I ain't. You could call Carrie. Carrie? phone box there actually it's a defibrillator now then you got the church there not real church bells just a speaker in the spire that bongs out every hour uh what else um big big war memorials very army raf kind of area hence royal wooden bassett not given royal status because um they do the uh, like the tributes and, and funeral processions repatriations for the deceased in uh afghanistan and iraq managed to not be paraded through these streets myself so um, and there's a bench. Excellent bench. Yeah, it's a good one. Carved my name in it somewhere. Uh, under this bit here, there it is. <laughs> Jay Watts. Watts. Jay Watts. Well, I can't put my full name, can I? I get caught. I really hope that with the clues of a teenager living opposite the bench who goes by the name Jay Watson, you'd be caught. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't realise the place is run down when you live in it, do you? Then when you take someone else here... We can avoid meeting her, if you wish. What? Carrie. We have plenty of other cards in our hand. We don't need to play this one, not until it's required, anyway. Uh, what, are you, uh, what are you talking about? Oh, nothing. Just... I'd rather peer down other avenues. Oh, Carrie's Beatrice's carer. Sherlock, she could give us some information. Yes, but at what cost? Oh, no. Sorry, Watson. What have you deduced? Oh, just a little thing. How? Your tattoo removal is rather shoddy. I know you think it looks like Roman numerals covering up the original name, but on close inspection... Oh, and you've done close inspection, have you? Once or twice. Sake. Like I say, we have other cards in our hand. It, it, I've come a long way, okay? It's only 90 miles to London. No, emotionally, emotionally I've come a long way. I'm sure Carrie has as well. You don't have to put off questioning her because of some stupid history. Okay? I can face it, I can hack it, I'm a big boy, okay? Would you like me to call? Uh, yeah, please. Could I see her number? 7541662321. See? You can store numbers in your head as well. Yeah, a little bit too much Carrie stored up there, to be honest. Quite unlikely she will answer a number she doesn't recognise. Shit, yeah. Um, hang up, use my phone. Okie dokie. What's wrong? Nothing. Just probably poor signal in this village. I'll try... I'm blocked, aren't I? Yes, you are. Yes. <laughs> Great. Great. Yeah, John Watson should be two tickets. Joe Mason sorted us out. Yes, uh, here you go, John. You're in the glamping pods. All right. Oh, hello, glamping. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Enjoy yourself, chaps. You hear that, Archie boy? Glamping. 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 Glamorous camping. So probably some sort of yurt or teepee. Wow, this brings back a lot of memories. It's quite beautiful. Yeah, it's quite the property. Indeed. Smoke. No, you can smoke later. No, the chimneys of the house. Smoke. Oh, yeah. yeah and here's me, lathered in sun cream. Mmm. Amazing house, isn't it? And the fields and forests. Oh, come this way. Come see this. We'll camp a bit further up there, but, um, yeah. Do you recognise this guy? The river. Yeah. Oh, steady, Archie. The Thames. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, there he is. The River Thames. Quite small over this way, not the, uh, not the guy we recognise from London. A lot cleaner than the London part of him anyway. Remarkable thing. Yeah. 
to see this trickle through the countryside, knowing what he'll eventually become. Mm. Journey, growth, and finally lost to much deeper, complex waters, unrecognisable in the homogeny. Or swallowed by a bulldog. Or that, of course. Come on, let's find the glamping. Think it's on the river, according to this. Come on, boy. Hello there. Thanks for joining us both at Shoscombe Festival. Can you hear that in the background? A little folk band up on the stage in the distance. That's towards the house. Uh, so we're in the Shoscombe Valley. Not particularly steep for a valley. Uh, very lush. Green rolling hills getting their last bit of sunshine as it sets just behind me in the west. Got some woodland about, um, what, maybe 300 yards to my right. To my left, I can make out the master detective and his fishing rod. I think it's safe to say we are finally making a bit of a holiday out of this. Got a beer on the go from the big booze tent, a local one, very nice. Um, apparently, what makes it glamping is not a fancy structure or anything, it's just a standard tent, but they give us glampers a little stone barbecue. So I'm tending to that now with a fish we caught on it. <laughs> That's a lie, it's sausages, haven't caught any fish. And Archie is right here next to me because, let's face it, I'm in charge of the pork that is sizzling away in front of him. Ah, oh, it is bloody lovely. There is no other way to put it. Bliss. Cheers. Ah, what? What is it? There's someone outside the tent. What? Now, go, go. Someone pissed up, mate. <sighs> They're running to the woods. Shut this way. Archie! Archie! I, oh, God. Oh, I see them. I see them. Come back here. Phone light. Phone light. Bloody hell. Watson, shine it into the forest. Into the forest. Yeah, I know. I know. <sighs> Shit, where have they gone? <sighs> They're hiding. I think it's best you come out and explain what you wanted with our belongings. Hello? I mean, we're not, we're not going to have a go. We're, we're just here to investigate a few things, that's all. Hello? Hel oh shit, Archie's gone. Archie! Archie! He's with her. Archie! He ran to his owner. What are you talking about? He's my dog. Yes, but he was hers. Come on out. Harry. What? Shh. Sherlock, what are you talking about? What are you doing? Uh, making a call. To who? Archie, this way! To 07541-662-3211. Oh, Jesus. Look, mate, it's not... Her. To binge this adventure in full and without ads, go to patreon.com forward slash Sherlock and Co.